Today I find myself on Wheeler Peak. Um, this is the Bavarian restaurant over to this side. Um, most vehicles you can drive up to the parking lot to get to the Bavarian restaurant. I'm in a larger vehicle today so I could not come up to that point which I wasn't real thrilled about because you know looking trying to make your travel plans and everything I thought I would be able to drive all the way up to this point. I wasn't because I'm in a too large of RV which set me back I'm later today than I had wanted to be. I'm still hoping that I won't be too long after dark on the descent down. I'm figuring I definitely will be after dark though due to the later start. I had to park down by the ski resort and then the extra climb to this point which I wasn't real thrilled about because I'm not big about just climbing you know walking extra miles just to be walking them when they're roads I'm not a big fan of that but I do like to travel in the motorhome it allows me to stop it more locate make better time be able to view more things so that's really nice but at this point it's caused me quite a bit of extra walking today so if you can park up by the Bavarian restaurant you just park to go there walk by it and you head up and I'm going to start the trail to um, Willem Lake which will then take me to the trail to Wheeler Peak here in northern New Mexico. Today the dogs are allowed if they are on leashes. Today my girl and male are staying back um, I had somebody in the party that did not want to make this long of a hike today, so they're going to be happier staying back there. As you can see, she's not; she's much more of a beach dog than a mountain girl. She would prefer not to be on rocky trails. At the beginning of this trail, you can see here, it's not a terrible trail, but it definitely is not going to be a smooth trail. I'm after another high point. That is why I'm at this location. Um, Wheeler Peak is the highest peak in New Mexico at 13,161 feet and is considered the 8th highest state peak. You know, it's not going to be the hardest one to climb by any means, but it's, it's a high one here. So I'm excited to add that to some of my highest peaks. And I'll kind of zoom along here just to give you uh, views of the trail kind of here along the bottom here. But it is going to be quite a long hike, so you don't want to just go at regular speed here. The hike begins just over 10,000 feet, near the Bavaria, of course, by the Bavarian Drive past the Teo Ski Resort. And you just follow the signs up to the restaurant if you make that, if you can have a vehicle you can drive there. The trail is about a 6.2 mile trek and you are starting out on the William Lake Trail and then you are going to take the trail off of that when you get to a point it's going to split there and we're going up to Wheeler Peak. There's an elevation gain of about 2,972 feet. So there is going to be some elevation gain in here. So the trail is probably rated like an intermediate um, as long as you're not attempting it in the winter. Winter summiting is going to be considerably harder because if you get any snow or anything, the trail, like you can see here, the trail will be a lot harder to find and just it's going to be more. So I'm here in October. The weather is beautiful. It's gorgeous, nice, sunny clouds. I'm going to be hiking this trail a little later in the afternoons and I'm hoping the weather will hold out good and we won't have any um, afternoon thunderstorms. And so I definitely have seen people, the hike here in between to William Le Willem Lake, it seems to be decently popular. So you get a decent amount of people going on this section of the lake. I've been asking different people like, have, are you going all the way to the top or where were you going? And I've only ran across a few that said they were actually going to the summit and not just up to the lake for like a picnic 
or just to view the lake. I'm not sure I will make it to the lake today. We will see. Due to the fact that I got later, there's an offshoot, so it's not a direct trail past that. My cutoff to Wheeler Peaks cuts off before the lake. And you can see here, I mean, the trail, it's got beautiful scenery. There's been some neat birds along the way. It's been pretty. Um, weather has been nice. Definitely remember to take layered on clothes, though, because it can get cooler. And then the hiking makes you warm. I hear that it's supposed to be quite windy to the top. And here we are at the different trail end here. I'm heading up to Wheeler Peak. Arrow goes this way. And if you were going to the lake, you would go off to the right there. So I've got a feeling that the trail is just getting started with some more elevation gain along here. It looks quite a bit steeper. So Wheeler Peak was formerly named Teos Peak, and of course the town down below is Teos, New Mexico. Um, it was renamed, um, I think for a surveyor or something here, Wheeler Peak in 1950. So that's just a little bit of the history of the mountain. So you can see here, it is definitely getting a little bit tighter. You're getting some steep offsides here. You don't really want to slip here. The trail's not bad. It's um, it's really a pretty good trail. It, you're starting to get some of the switch packs. We're starting to get up here a little more above the tree lines. As you can see out there, we're starting to get some of the beautiful views. Just don't slip. It's pretty steep on that right side. They said to definitely keep your eyes out because there, um, maybe you might get to see like bighorn sheep in this area or other wildlife. Um, I think the bighorn sheep probably are a little closer to the top, but we're starting to get out here. You know, we're starting to get some of the brushy, less trees. There's a good view back down there, and you can see the lake down in that little valley down there, just a little bit shimmering there. And there's a little bit of our trail ahead of us. Looks like we're going down and then coming back up here. And maybe that's our peak up there. We'll see. We'll take a good look, and there's the trail behind us. So as you can see, we're starting to get up where we get maybe getting a little bit of alpine meadows and things. Look at that view. There's some gorgeous views back here of the Teos Valley and the ski resort is down there and just some of the mountain range there. And we'll do a little more time lapsing here just to give you some of the views along here. It's really beautiful, but I'll be honest with you, I am feeling it. It has been a hard climb. It's beautiful, um, but it's definitely steep. So definitely remember that if you, it's, it's definitely a challenging, I mean, it's definitely challenging. We are definitely headed up with switchbacking, kind of big switchbacks along there. You can kind of see the steepness down there. Kind of heading up kind of into a bowl before we head, head up to the last ascent up that way. And the temperature, you can feel it. It's cooling down. Of course, we're getting a little later in the day. 
and the wind's picking up here on the top once we're out of the tr tree line. So Wheeler Peak is in the wilderness, is the Wheeler Peak Mountain is in the wilderness area and there's about almost 2,000 acres um, lying atop of the Sangria de Cristo mountain range. I am probably butchering that. I'm not real good on my um, pronunciations and that kind of thing, but it's beautiful territory. Um, just gorgeous. So the best times they do say to climb it is through um, late spring through early fall um, and there are different months that are considered their rainy, rainy season versus the drier months. I'm here in October and it has been gorgeous weather. I've been touring along um, this northern New Mexico. The weather has been beautiful. So it's been a great time I think to be traveling here. I did run across a little bit of rain showers uh, a couple days ago, but got a beautiful rainbow. Have enjoyed the scenery. You can see here we're getting we're getting our elevation in, and the trail is just kind of winding up here. It went through some debris field back there, but you're getting beautiful views, really beautiful. You're feeling it though. Um, the hiking and everything, you kind of feel like turning around. I keep telling myself, it's too far from home. This is my chance to hike it. There's so much things, so many things I want to see in this. We have a beautiful country and each state has so many different things to offer and to view. And you know, if I wasn't going for a high point in New Mexico, I probably would have passed this over simply because the time, you know, you're always balancing what you want to see versus how long it's going to take to do it. But I've really enjoyed being able to just stop and say, hey, no matter if it takes me a day, I'm going to climb the highest peak in each state if I can. And it's allowed me to see beautiful sceneries that I might not have taken the time to see. I mean, this is just gorgeous. And yes, it is a long hike. It is a hard hike. But I think it's worth getting to see a piece of, I mean, just, it's beautiful out there. You can see the views and we haven't even made it to the top. It's just gorgeous. So do, if you are hiking here, do keep your eyes out for like some golden eagles because I'm pretty sure there were some golden eagles up there flying and they say they're supposed to be here. So keep your eyes out for them. I think that was pretty neat to be able to see. And you can see here we've kind of lost a lot of the either the shrubbery now the grass is even splotchy we're getting close we're getting close to long to get up to the top and then i think we got a little ways to go along the ridge there are some other trails that you can take to get up to the top of this um high point so if you want a longer hike or a different trail, you could look into those and take them. There was one that was supposed to go right along the ridge that looked gorgeous. I just didn't have the time to do it, but it looked like it would have been a really beautiful hike along the ridge of some of these other mountains getting up to this peak. Get a little bit of a shadow in here. And we're getting close to getting up to the top. We're c catching a little bit of snow up here, a little bit of ice. But there's not much. It's just, it doesn't, it's not making it slippery or anything. It's beautiful. I will go ahead and tell you the wind is unbelievably strong up here. If you have not taken something, I mean, if you're starting at the bottom, what I would recommend is that you take some kind of gloves or hand protection it is so cold i mean the weather down there was great you get up here the wind is so strong and it is so cold like the fingers feel like they are just freezing they're they're going so numb so fast it's hard to even click the button on the camera and you see here we're getting a back view we've made it to the ridge crest kind of and this is the back view 
which is a beautiful, beautiful um, view on this back side as well as the other side that we've been coming up. We'll see if we can't get a good circle here for you to view. And I am glad that the weather is holding beautifully. I mean, it's freezing and it's really windy, but no thunderstorms. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm close to the top, which I am totally worn out. So I'm really excited about that also. And the sun is getting a little farther down because I still have a long way to go down still. So I'm definitely going to be hiking some in the dark, but as long as I get past down into off some of those real steep paths, I'm not worried about it. I brought some flashlights and things, so I'm not worried about that. But I don't think I'm going to be able to stay up here too long due to the cold. I would... Somebody in my party that I was hiking with brought extra socks. I was very excited about that because I've got them on my hands because it is so cold. The wind chill has got to be so cold. We're going to do some time lapse here because we're going to try to make some tracks because now that the wind's hit, I really want to make to the peak. You can see that the trail came along, hit the ridge crest, and then it's not the peak yet. You still got to keep going along here for a little ways. There were some big torn sheep down along the back side of here. They were quite a ways in the distance, but keep your eyes out because they are in this area and I'm guessing they like it up here. So this ridge crest would be beautiful for hiking. I wonder if you can hike all the way along there, but it would be so cold. Definitely make sure you bring, and you might want to bring some extra batteries because I have some people in the party, or some people that I passed on the trail that said that the cold kind of just drained their batteries for their cameras and stuff, They were and phones. They were very upset about it because they didn't get to have the pictures they wanted to. So might want to keep that in mind. The weather up here is very cold. The wind chill is very strong bring extra jacket that you can on layer because you will want to on layer once you get past down here because it hiking it warms you up but up here it is extremely cold and it's just more stunning views on both sides we're getting up here so we can get a good full circle And yes, like a lot of mountains, you have what your little false peak that you go, oh, there it is, and then you gotta keep going. My puppy is gonna be so glad that she stayed behind. She would not like this trail, she would not like the cold, and she would definitely be totally worn out by now. She'd be looking at me like I was crazy for hiking this long of a trail. And we are almost here now. I see, I see the top. And here we go, here is our plaque. We've made it to the highest point in New Mexico. So it's very beautiful out there. But as you can see, it's mostly, um, you've got your pines, you've got your um, alpine meadows, not much in the way of any hardwoods for any color, even though it's a pretty October day here. And we'll take a big look back at that ridge. That's where we came from. And that's down our valley, back down by the Teo Ski Resort. And here is our geological marker. And there's a nice little stand of rocks there that makes for a nice little windbreak when you're cuddling down behind it. So we are headed, headed back down. Um, stayed up here, enjoyed it, but I'm a little worried about daylight 
and also it is so cold. There we go. We got a little bit of view of the bighorn sheep down there running. And some more beautiful views of the mountain range here. And we're headed back down the trail. Like I said, there were not many people actually coming to the peak. I think on the there is a book up there that you, inside that tube that you should make sure and sign. And you can look at who else signed for that day. And I think it was just like three other people had made it to the top today that's signed in. So once you cut off to this trail, there's not it's not a very crowded trail. The Willem Lake Trail much more of a destination point this one there's less much less people and of course on a trail like this I'd always recommend having an extra person if you have somebody to hike with it makes it more enjoyable in my opinion as well as just in case a slip or accident you've got somebody there You can see some of the beautiful alpine meadows here. And the sun's starting to go down a little, so I'm going to have to beat it and move along here. But it was a beautiful day, a great adventure. I enjoyed this highest point in New Mexico. If you like this video, ring the bell, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll see you somewhere in another beautiful spot in our beautiful country. See you next time.